You gotta make sure my boobs are not out. Hi guys, I'm Monica, and welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. And today is another Seven on Sunday. And today, I'm just gonna get right to it because, oh, no wait, I forgot to tell you. Today I'm gonna do something a little bit different. You're gonna actually see me. I'm gonna try to move the tripod back, or I don't really need to, because from here on down, and these are basically all my shelves. So really, this is all that you need to see. But um, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. <laughs> like, my thought process behind the prompt. So let's read the prompt first. It's June 28th, books you don't mention enough, inspired by which kittens topic suggestion. <laughs> When picking books for tags or recommendations, we tend to overlook these books, even if they were decent reads. We want to hear what these books are for you. Now, I have to say one thing. The reason I sometimes overlook books is because I don't have them physically. So I've been getting into kind of buying books that I've read but don't have physically because I forget about them. Like, I would literally have to go through my Goodreads in order to like find them. So let's get a cracking. I'm gonna first look down here on this shelf because I know there is a book that I never mentioned that is down here. We're supposed to be looking for seven books, so. Is it here or is it over there? Where did I put it? Found one. Found another one right here and right here. This is easy because since these are all like my <laughs> loved books, I could just go through here and see the ones that I haven't mentioned to you. Oh, definitely this one. Oh, how am I going to get this book out? Okay. See, this is the problem with you. Got Tetris shelves. Also, if anybody gets my tattoo reference, tell me down below. I thought this was going to be easier. Oh, I got one. It's, like, it's over here in a pile. Or no, did I leave it over there? Okay, I left it over on my TBR shelf because I was getting books for another video, but let me go get it. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, two more. I do talk about the magicians a lot. I talk about the monster biologists. I talk about Wanda. If you want me to talk about them again, I will, but that's not the tag. Oh, well, I have talked about this one for one tag, but I don't feel these books get the love they deserve on my channel. Okay, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm going with these three. If you see this, this is gonna be the thumbnail. I found the books. <laughs> so let's get going. I'm just gonna go off the top. I'm gonna tell you Maybe a little synopsis about these books and tell you why I don't mention it enough. Number one, Sarah Waters, The Little Stranger. I really, really enjoyed this book. This book is incredible. It's kind of a... I, would, I don't like to use the word stereotypical because then it sounds like it's not good, but it's a, it's a horror haunted mansion story. And I don't mention this book enough. I think because I never find where to mention it. Because it's not like... It, it, because when I think about like, oh my god, amazing books in this kind of genre, my mind automatically goes to Rebecca. Like, that's the one that I'm going to mention. And also, when I think about haunted houses, then it's like Haunting of Hill House. So I think this kind of falls in the middle, but it's not because it's not good or because it's not as good as the other ones. It's just that it, I just don't mention it enough and I don't find a place where to put it. This is about, yeah, this is just basically about a family that is being haunted by a ghost, but nobody really believes them. I like that about this book, because I, when when you go into haunting houses, there the people usually kind of have an idea about, oh, there's a haunting in this house. In this book, it's not like that. It's like, is there a haunting here? Is there not? We don't know. So it's really, really good. I recommend it. I also recommend the movie that was adapted. It's really, really good, and it's really faithful to the story. Be warned, though, it's I think it's a gothic story. It's, really tragic <laughs> all right up next we have a book that i recently read and that you'll see a video coming up for me that this book almost made the cut for but it didn't and i just never mention it because again it's kind of a weird story to mention because there's not a lot here that i can mention it's about a writer who's kind of going crazy up in the mountains writing a book he doesn't even want to write he doesn't consider himself a great writer and he hates mary shelley and frankenstein and that's pretty much the premise of the story but there's so much more into it the prose is beautiful it's very haunting very nightmare like i, I just realized are my joking most of these are exactly the same thing it's kind of nightmarish like prose 
and I think people won't enjoy that. I think that that's why I avoid mentioning in these books because I just feel people won't enjoy them because they're not gonna enjoy the crazy, I'm sorry, I'm like really far back, like the really crazy prose and I just, I don't know, I don't mention it enough but um, you should definitely pick this up if you like kind of like weird shit. And I really like weird shit, we've been through this. <laughs> Okay, up next, I have Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. Now, I adored this book when I read it. I love the HBO adaptation. We've talked about it. I've already talked about it once. But the real reason, like, I don't feel that I talk about this book enough. And one of them is, everybody knows Gillian Flynn for Gone Girl. Everybody's like, Gone Girl's the best, Gone, Gone Girl's the best, etc. And the reason I talk about this book is because... It wasn't on my shelves until recently and I found that if the book is not on my shelf like if I read it on Kindle or if I read it on audiobook I don't tend to talk about it as much as if I had it physically so I've actually been buying a bunch of physical copies of books that I loved and that I want to talk about and that I want to own but I don't own because I already read it you know the other thing I think this book is a little like so I'm sorry, it's so hot, my hair's sticking to my head. Another reason I don't talk about it enough is because this book is kind of old. And I feel like everybody's like, uh, yeah, whatever, that book that you read once, you know? So I don't talk about it enough because everybody's like, yeah, we all know Gillian Flynn is awesome, get over it. And, and I just feel like it's time has passed for booktube. But when I posted about this the last time, a lot of people were like, Wow, I, I haven't read much from Gillian Flynn except for Gone Girl. So if you haven't read this, my god, it's so hot. I've talked about this before. This is a great time to read this book. But this is the story of Camille Preaker. Camille Preaker is a woman who ran away from a little small town in Missouri where her family is like the It family. They're the Joneses. And she just didn't fit in. She's also a cutter. She's going through a lot of shit in her life. She's basically an alcoholic and she needs to write this article for her boss and the reason that his, her boss sends her there is because there was a murder in her small town or at least a disappearance it's not it's a murder there was a murder in her small town and he wants her to write an article but she gets way too involved and she wants to solve the murder I really really love this book and I really recommend that you pick it up actually just now, I thought of another one, so yay for me cheating, I have eight books. But uh, I'm going to recommend The Girl on the Train, and I don't remember the author, but you're seeing it right here. The, the, the movie is not that good, even though it's got one of my favorite actresses of all time, which is Emily Blunt. But The Girl on the Train, the book, is actually really good. I think this book doesn't get enough praise because there was a moment there where after Gone Girl, everyone was writing the same thing. And I think this book fall, this book fell into that category of kind of alcoholic woman trying to solve a murder like basically that's it but this book is actually really really good now i did read this before i read gillian flynn's novels both dark places and the one i just mentioned sharp objects do i think the writing is better in gillian flynn's work yes do I think this book is still really, really good and I never mention it? Never. I have never talked about this book on my channel. And I actually think about this book and Sharp Objects more than I think about any other of these kinds of stories. So I definitely recommend that you give The Girl on the Train a, 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 like a shot. Just know that it does talk about alcoholism and stuff like that, just in case that that's not your jam. But those are some really, really good books to get into, especially if you... I don't know, I always feel like these, I, I, I mentioned this in my summer recommendation list, these are like muggy, icky, sticky books that make you feel summery. Well, me, because I hate the summer. So, you know, it's great, it's really, really good. This is about a woman who thinks she sees something happen while she's on a train, but can you really trust somebody who has blackouts because she's an alcoholic? That's the main premise. That's all you need to know to go into it. And the rest, you can just be surprised. Oh god, I'm melting. All right, let's see, what do we have up next? Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I don't mention this enough. Uh, whenever I talk about classics, I always talk about Jane Eyre. I always talk about Wuthering Heights. I always talk about the picture of Dorian Gay. Dorian Gay, great. Well, he would have liked that. But the picture of Dorian Gray, 
but um i never talk about how incredible little women is little women is such a warm hug from the inside out that i just can't and i and i never talk about it i never sit here and recommend that you pick up this book or read it and the reality is that i really want everyone to read this book i think it's because also the movie had come out recently and i'm like of course everybody picked up the book for like before reading the movie before reading the movie <laughs> before watching the movie but the I, I don't know i i think i should just insist more on this book and you know what i should insist that men read this book because i think a lot of people that read this book tend to be women because this is kind of like that stereotypical girl why is it called bromance and not girl mans but anyway like that's like that stereotypical kind of Liter classic literary fiction chiclet. I don't, th that's the only way I can describe it. But I really recommend everybody pick this up. This is the story of the March family and the four daughters that are in that family. And we follow them throughout their lives. And it's such a wholesome, such a beautiful look at women, at sisterhood, at love, at mistakes. It's, it's a, an amazing story and I guess whenever I'm asked about classics, again, I just go automatically to Jane Eyre or Wuthering Heights and I forget, I don't forget, I just don't mention this enough and I should, I really should. Another book that I don't mention enough because I think it's kind of past its time on booktube or, you know, or just the world in general is A Monster Called by Patrick Ness. This book is incredible. This book deals with grief in a, such an amazing manner. This book is kind of nightmarish, like that weird prose that I like where it's like, am I having, it's, is the character having a nightmare or are they not? Is this really happening? And then the end, as heartbreaking as it is, it's, it's such a beautiful book to read in one sitting. And again, I just feel like this had its time on booktube and that's why I don't talk about it enough. But again, who cares? You know, I should, I should talk about it enough. This is actually one of my favorite books of all time, of all time. And I never mention it. So in case you don't know, this is the story of a little boy who is going through the difficult task of dealing with the fact that his mother is probably going to pass away from cancer. And nobody seems to want to tell him that, but he feels it. And he starts to see a monster. And basically, he has to. T this monster is going to destroy his world. And he, the monster starts to tell him stories. And that's how he kind of deals with the trauma of possibly losing his mom. And I think this book is so beautiful. And again, if you haven't read it, please pick it up. I think this is going to be one of those middle grade classics people reading high like in high school in school or at least it should be in my mind all right another book i never talk about neverwhere by neil gaiman again it's that thing where i don't know who to recommend this book to because this book is weird and i feel like we are so used in booktube land to like be i, I don't want to i don't want to say like oh we're used to shallow books and stuff like that it's not that it's just a, like that kind of nightmarish feel you get where you're like, is this really happening? Nobody's holding my hand through this and stuff like that. It just go with Neil Gaiman's writing. If you like Neil Gaiman, you like Neil Gaiman. If you don't like Neil Gaiman, you don't like Neil Gaiman. So I think that this is a very polarizing book and that's why I never recommend it. But honestly, this is probably, again, one of the best books that I ever read and I never recommend it. I also don't know where to put it, ever. Like, where do I put this? Like, books that made me happy? I'm not sure this book made me happy, per se. My cat is using the litter box. I swear, she can't wait for me to be doing anything else. She, she, she hasn't used it all day. And she does it, like, angrily. Finally, out of the litter box. So we were talking about Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. Now this is the story of a stereotypical London man who gets swept away in this crazy ass world called, what is it called? Um, is it like the underground? I'm sorry, I had this one is in Spanish, so I'm translating from Spanish in the underground. Uh, but basically that's full of magical cre creatures, 
crazy adventure. It's so much fun. But it's also one of those things where you really are, what's his name, Richard Mayhew. Like, you are Richard Mayhew. You have no idea what's going on, and Neil Gaiman doesn't take the time to explain it to you. It's like, you either accept this or you don't, which I think is such a wonderful experience as a reader, because you are literally experiencing the, the, the adventure as the character would. And the end of this book is just amazing. I really recommend that you read it if you really like like that kind of idea that your everyday life could suddenly be turned upside down by finding like a magical key to a magical land like i would say like this is like narnia or or something like that for adults you know I, i'm not gonna mention the schwab so i'm not gonna mention the schwab okay next up night film by marisha pestle i adore this book and i don't mention it because I'm kind of scared too because it seems that while this book was famous on book two a lot of people found the portrayal of women in this book to be problematic which is funny because I find the portrayal of women in 99% of the books people recommend problematic but I just kind of get a little bit like uh, scared to mention it because people are gonna be women in that book are problematic and I'm like uh, the portrayal of women in the world is problematic you know like <laughs> the way people see us is problematic so uh, I'm not excusing the book but I am I, I, I just wonder why this book was so heavily hit on when I've seen portrayals of women throughout many many books in a very problematic fashion I just don't understand why this book was so severely attacked because honestly I don't see such a big difference between this and the majority of books in this genre you know this like uh, novella noir genre that isn't kind of I, I actually to be honest with you I didn't see it as problematic as some other more popular books that's that's the reality so I don't mention it because I don't want to be like I, 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 I don't want people to come after me for mentioning a book. That's the real reason I don't mention it. But I actually really, really love this story. It's uh, not your classic format. Like you have web pages that you go to and stuff like that. And I just remembered that I read this during the winter. And this book has stayed with me for a really long time. There's a particular scene in this book that every time I think about it, I just get chills. And also, this book made me want to watch the movies that they talk about but it's all fictional and a lot of people don't like the end a lot of people want a resolution during the end but i'm the kind of person that doesn't care if there's a resolution in the end i actually just enjoy books for the experience and not for the ending if you are somebody that likes tied ends and everything this is not the book for you but i actually love that this is a standalone that just doesn't answer your questions so this book is about i'm just gonna read the back on a damp october night the body of beautiful ashley cordova is discovered in a manhattan warehouse though her death is ruled a suicide investigative journalist scott mcgrath suspects otherwise the last time mcgrath got two close to the Cordova dynasty, he lost his marriage and his career. This time he could lose his mind. And I, I really like this book. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, was it, did it have problematic mention, like were the women in the book a bit of a problematic issue? I guess, but isn't that the case for most books? I don't know, I'm sorry, I, I just, I found that that was such a nitpicky thing when I could point out 10 different books that have worst depiction of women that people really like so i just i guess i'm a little bit sour about that <laughs> so, and i also don't mention it now people are gonna come at me come at me i'm here for you on the other side of this screen where i can hide all right and the last book i have to mention is bird box by josh mallerman this book blew my fucking mind i fucking love this book but again, with the other ones, I don't mention it because I feel that it's been over-mentioned already on booktube. There was the movie on Netflix, which by the way, I love that everybody that is like younger than 30 is like, oh, Sandra Bullock, the girl from Bird Box, and, or the woman from Bird Box, and, and I'm like, ouch, ouch, that hurts me in my aging self. But anyway, uh, yeah, I absolutely adore this book. I My cats are fine. I just I was taken away by how wonderful it is um, this this book 
is apocalypse not it's not called that it's called lovecraftian terror is it lovecraftian terror it's got a specific name and i will link a video that is amazing that explains it up here and why it doesn't work for hollywood anymore but basically this book is about a bunch of creatures that enter the earth somehow and if you look at them you go crazy and you commit suicide and this is the story of a bunch of survivors and especially Mallory who is trying to get somewhere and you learn about how Mallory gets to where she is at the beginning of the book through like flashbacks kind of if I remember correctly I read this a while ago but it's amazing it's 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 hard it's a hard read really hard read like I actually hadn't bought this book until recently because I'm I don't want to put myself through the pain of reading this book again once was enough but I want to own it I want to own it to put it on my shelves I want to have it because this is just such an incredible book I just will not read it again probably I don't know maybe I will um it's not because it's not good it's because it's that good that the emotions that I got from it I was like oh my god that was a wild wild ride you know so um I don't know if I would read it again but I think you should read it at least once. All right, and that's it. Those are the Shitting Vein 8 books that I never talk about on my channel and the reasons why I don't talk about them. Um, have you read any of these books? Do you want to read any of these books? Have you written off any of these books for any reason whatsoever? Please let me know down below and once again, Thank you again for coming back to my channel. Thank you for coming if you are new. I hope that you will like, subscribe, share, and comment down below because that's what this platform is all about. It's about sharing our love of books. So, without further ado, I bid you adieu and I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Bye, guys.